Yeah, I'm Peter Dvorak, and I will be presenting some tips and tricks how to use Kicket for serious hardware development. Uh, some people tell that Kicket is a toy for hobbyists and tinkerers, and I think it's a quite professional tool, especially in the latest, late, lately released uh, version eight. So I think Kicket is fast. If you move from and other systems, you would be surprised how fast and how reactive the Kicket is. Kicket is flexible because it can be uh, fueled with uh, many action plugins and uh, yeah, extensions. It's a, it's an open system and affordable. For many of us, it's it's free. It's for zero zero dollar US dollars or euro or anything but uh yeah we can we can support developers by some some uh, money but uh, yeah basically it's free so i prepared a live demo for you uh, there will be uh, 15 stages uh, we will be we will be present in the schematic editor and then in the pcb editor so let's switch to kick it here is the stage one. Let's see that the task is to change a C20 to another, another symbol, another component. Of course, we can always do that. Uh, yeah, we can delete the C20, find another one in the database and place it in the place of C20. But uh, there is a more elegant solution for multiple multiple reasons. So I recommend to use the change symbol feature in the properties of the symbol. So uh, open the symbol properties by uh, E key. And there is a symbol property window <clears throat> and the button change symbol. You can, uh, you can leave the checked ch uh, ch uh, change select symbols checked or you can uh, change the settings, but uh, we want to change only C20. So keep the change selected symbols as is. Now I am looking for, uh, yeah, another symbol. Here it is. I recommend to check the value option because sometimes the value can, can differ and you don't want to keep the values from the old from the old symbol. So voila, and the symbol is changed. The, the value position can be changed so you can arrange it and it is. So yeah, we start it slowly, but uh, that tool is really, really useful. Stage two, multiple symbol change. I showed you that uh, the symbol property can be used for symbol change, but not for multiple symbols. The task is to change C23 and C24 to 0402. So for instance, I will select multiple capacitors, multiple symbols, but the, the E key doesn't work because the, the property is, the property window is, uh, functioning only for a single symbol. Then when we want to, ch to change multiple symbols, we need to go to the contextual menu. So right mouse button, change symbols from the menu. And the situation is the same. Yeah. I will find another symbol. I recommend keep the value checked and change. Uh, that tool can be used for changing. Yeah, both tools can be used for changing all, all uh, similar symbols in the entire schematics. But it's a it's a bug change, and we don't always want to make bug changes because, uh, frankly, I don't I don't I don't use it because once I don't know what's happening in the sheet number I don't know fifteen. I don't do that because it's a, it's a hidden change and it's a ticking bomb. 
So multiple symbol change, contextual menu, and change symbols. So let's see the stage three. Linking labels, that feature was uh, introduced in KitKat version seven, I think. And it's, it's really useful. Uh, let's say, let's say that we need to make the web link alive. So here, this is normal text label. And uh, in the bottom of the text property window, there is a checkbox link, and then we can easily select the HTTP and place the URL in there. And now the link is alive. I'm not going to click and to move to the browser, but you can see that the, the link is, is alive. But not, uh, it was even more important and useful is we can use the links to moving between sheets. So here is the similar text field. I'm going to its properties. I'm checking the link checkbox and then I can select that I want to go to sheet two. So now the link is active and I, I can go, I can be moved to the sheet two. Let's see, yeah, this is sheet two, it works. So really useful, for example, for hierarchical schematics, when you want to navigate the user or the fellow engineer uh, through the schematics, through the labels. So uh, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's really, really useful. And uh, for instance, for engineers who didn't create the schematics, it's uh, really helpful to navigate through the, through the design. So let's see stage four. Stage four will be a little bit longer because there are two parts. I repeat the last item. That that great feature was introduced in Kicket Seven, I think, or Six. I'm not I'm uh, not sure now, and uh, I will I will show you in action. Uh, let's say the task is create ten labeled wires. The the step A will be that I will be using the repeat the last item. So I will draw the wire for pin one, and then I'm going to repeat the last action command. I have the keyboard shortcut command I, and you, you can def define your own shortcut. I think in the default setup, there is no active keyboard shortcut. And I am hitting the key now, and as you, as you, as you can see, there, there are 10 wires in a, in a second. Now labels. I place label, for instance, PA0 or PA1. To the wire, and I use the same, the same command, repeat the last item. And you can see even the number is being incremented. So in a few seconds, I labeled the connector or anything. Now we are in KitKat 8. Uh, the KitKat 8 was released like a week ago, and there is a new feature called pin helpers. But uh, before we first use the pin helpers, we need to check and to basically change some setup in the in the KitKat settings, because uh, pin helpers function need uh, I will I will show you. Click at settings, schematic editor, editing options, and this option in the section selection must be unchecked. Clicking on pin select the symbol must be unchecked because I want to be able to select only pins. Yeah, you can see I drag the left button pressed and all pins are now selected. Now, 
I press the right mouse button. Then I have the press is on the uh, top position, and I can I can place directly uh, net labels. Yeah, net labels are here. Don't unselect the lab the the labels. Press G for dragging, and now the labels are dragged along with the wire. It's a it's a faster, but uh, you don't have uh, the full control of labels. And uh, yeah, uh, there is not standard setup for the for the pins because now you selecting pins instead of symbols. So it's up to you. I I think I will stick with the repeat last item uh, approach, but uh, the pin helpers can be time saver as well. Stage five. Stage five is about assigning a net class to labels. Uh, I prepared a few subtasks. So now we need to create two labels. It's simple. Then create a new net class because once we need to assign a net class, we need to create the net class because the kicker doesn't contain anything but the default net class, which is uh, not useful for us in common designs. And then assign to the new net class to the to the to both uh, to both connections to both wires. So I start with labels. It's simple. Net one. Net two. And uh, <clears throat> the approach is we need to switch to uh, PCB editor to create some uh, new net uh, net class. Uh, the net, new net class is being created in uh, or can be created in board setup window. The design rules under net classes section. As you as you can see, here is only the default net class. I need to create a new one. For instance, net. Uh, that I I don't know it it doesn't doesn't matter the name doesn't matter. Okay, now I can switch back to schematics editor. Select the net label, and uh, it can be confusing, but you need to press the plus button. And the initial setup is assigning net classes. So the name will be net class and value will be the newly created net class. And here is the label for the net class. Again, I am going to open the net class properties. Here you can you can set the the shape of the of the net class net class uh, uh, label. It can be italic, bold, it can be centered, it can be even hidden. I think the italic setup as a default setup is uh, quite good because it differs from the from the net label shape. And the same I will do for the second label. So plus button, net class is the default position, default setup value net class A. Net A, and here we are. So let's see stage six. Stage six is about differential pairs. Differential pairs, uh, similar to net classes, uh, need some uh, attention, and the attention must be put on uh, net labels the the default setup are uh, and the, the, this cannot be changed is that the net labels for differential pairs must must ends with the plus and minus character or with p or n character in other way uh, the or only this way the differential pairs can work and can be routed so Let's place the correct net labels. Uh, 
I'm going to create or I'm creating the USB plus and OSB minus. So uh, here is the here are the labels. I'm I'm switching to the PCB editor through F8 hotkey. It uh, reflects all the changes from schematics to the uh, PCB editor. Yes, update PCB. Close, and uh, we need to be in stage six. Here it is, and you can see the pin two and three are already labeled with USB plus and minus. And uh, now we can start uh, routing differential pairs. The hotkey shortcut is uh, six, but you can go to the menu, route differential pair, click on the on the on the label on the pin where the differential pair uh, start starts, and we can root our root our differential pair. So we have a differential pair, but we need to uh, make some things. The usual things for differential pairs is that we need to tune, tune length of the differential pair, or we need to tune the skew of the differential, differential pair. Kicket uh, somehow changed the, the approach of uh, measuring the length. The previous version seven was in my opinion, more straightforward, but this time uh, the in version eight, uh, the tune length uh, works uh, as I'm going to, to show you. So again, go to root menu or press uh, key uh, eight for tuning length of the differential pair. And once you click the differential pair, Oh, sorry, again. You can see there is a measured length and uh, I can change the, the length of the, of the differential pair. In the contextual menu, there is a few helpers. Uh, the Think is that the the commands are accessible only through the keyboard shortcuts, not from the menu. Because once the tune length of the differential pair command is active, you cannot go to the menu because you would cancel the the command. So increase spacing is by uh, pressing the number one, decrease by number two, increase amplitude by number three, and decrease amplitude by number four. So, for instance, I want to. Yeah, this is the new feature of the of the Kicket Eight that you can tune the the meanders manually by by uh, from the from the by 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 the mouse. So you can on, see the online calculating the length and. Uh, it's it's quite it's quite handy, but uh, it's a uh, it doesn't work uh, always like easily and smoothly. You can sometimes look for the correct place where to where to uh, where to place the meander. Yeah. Uh, let's see how the tune of the skew works. The skew tuning is present uh, behind the shortcut number nine or from the menu tune skew of a differential pair. And uh, when you click on the differential pair, there is a new feature, uh, as I said, in Kicket 8 for manually uh, modifying the demanders, but it uh, it uh, <clears throat> differs the or the, it, it cancels the function of the skew tuning. So I need to delete manually 
those those meanders, uh, those manually uh, changed meanders, and place them again. It doesn't doesn't work as as smoothly as in version seven. You you can see it that it's not 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 good. So I think I will go to the next stage because the the length to link. I I tried in the afternoon the the, the features before. The webinar it works better, but I'm not. I, frankly, I'm not satisfied with the with the change in version eight. I need to take a look at it. So I'm sorry. I apologize. Let's go to stage seven. Stage seven uh, block swapping. Uh, let's say that we need to change some blocks. For instance, for logical devices, for operational amplifiers, for similar devices that uh, is composed from the same blocks, so A to D and B to C. Of course, we can grab the A and make it this way. Yeah, but uh, sometimes it's not not the great way, and uh, sometimes there is a uh, better way and I will show you the, the better way. So let's let's uh, let's say that I need to change that the, the change back. So D to A and A to D. There is a property window for the symbol. And here you can see the in the section general there is a unit section when there is directly possible to change the unit. So D to A and A to D. It's faster, more precise, safer because you don't change the position of the symbols. You can't change the, the connection because sometimes it can happen that you place the symbol like that and the, the connection is, uh, is interrupted. So block swapping <clears throat> this way. What's the block block swapping for? Well, uh, once you create your schematics and move to the PCB layout, you basically are looking for the the best connection and best layout. So sometimes it's uh, very useful to have a chance to switch units of a device with generic parts because it uh, it can make the PCB layout easier. It can make the tracks shorter without routing, without crossings, without vias. So only the good things. So I recommend to manage the block swapping from the schematics, the way from the property window. It, gives, it saves time and it's more, more precise than the manual changing. Stage eight. Pack and move feature. Pack and move feature. It's a uh, one of the features for the PCB editor during the uh, during the component placement sec uh, during the component placement job. Uh, let's see. Here is a snippet of a schematics. It's a uh, nothing nothing that makes sense. It's just a schematic snippet, and uh, I let's say that I need to place some components on the PCB. So let's switch to the PCB editor. And here is the here is the uh, the mass of the symbols of the footprints as as you can see when the schematics is uh, transformed into the bare and empty PCB layout. So Let's say that I need to start with the uh, power supply and uh, with the blocking caps. So I just select the symbols 
move to the PCB editor. The, sim the footprints are already, are already selected. Now, oh, I click the left button instead of the right, so I'm doing it again. Here it is. Power supply and symbols. PCB editor. And now right click, pack and move footprints is the command I'm looking for, or the key shortcut P. Now your footprints are packed. You can move it because they are sticked on the cursor. You can move it, move them everywhere, place them and start component placement only with your selected footprints. Really useful feature, especially for crowded and uh, yeah, for designs with uh, with uh, a lot of footprints. Let's see the stage nine. Stage nine is another useful feature in the PCB editor and the feature is filter selected items. I will show you how it works. I'm sorry. Stage nine. So here is a snippet of the PCB layout that doesn't make sense, just a demo. There are some tracks on top and bottom layer. And uh, let's see, uh, let's say that I want to delete all tracks on the bottom side. It's uh, quite a simple. Yeah, I can I can select all the all the tracks one by one and delete using the the delete key. But uh, let's let's uh, use the filter select items because once the the, the layout is bigger, uh, it's quite quite for a long time. So I said that we need to delete all the tracks on the bottom side. So let's make the front side tracks hidden. Select the entire section. So I selected all footprints, all, footprints, all tracks, and all vias. All, yeah, good idea. And all text items. Now, the contextual menu, right mouse click, select, filter selected items. And here is a window for the selected items. I unchecked the, all items. And now I want to delete all tracks on the bottom side. So I check only include tracks, press OK. And only the bottom side tracks are selected. Now, when I make the front uh, front layer tracks visible, they are they are they are visible here now and now. But as you can see, only the bottom side tracks are selected. So I am pressing the delete button, and they disappear. So. Uh, it can save a lot of time, especially during the the redesigns, rework, engineering change, yeah, you name it. So let's see the tools. Uh, pardon. Let's see the schematic editor, stage 10. Stage 10, create from selection in PCB editor. This is the, the, the command is called create from selection. And the task is create an array of vias in five times 10 composition, two millimeters times two millimeters from each other. This is a useful thing and a quite frequent thing for stitching vias, for placing vias on big copper polygons, copper pores. Uh, yeah, you know, you know the situation. So, uh, you can do it manually to set the, the grid to, for instance, two millimeters or one millimeter. And 
to place it one by one, but it's not what we need to do because 50 vias uh, placing takes some time and uh, yeah, let's let's use some automated way, way of doing. So stage 10. Uh, here is a prepared via. We can place uh, a new one. I will use the, the current one. And the tool is accessible from the contextual menu. Create from selection and create array. There is a hotkey command T on my Mac. I don't know if the hotkey is uh, control T on Windows or Linux or a different, I think, control T. So create array. And here is the window of the of the tool. We need five times 10. So five times 10 and uh, spacing will be two millimeters and two millimeters. So five, 10, two, two. We are ready. Okay. Ah, oh, here is our VR array. Quick, easy, fast, elegant, precise. Everything what we need. Do you know what's the great thing in Kiket? Uh, you can see that I chose the create from selection tool. So it doesn't need to be, yeah, it doesn't need to be footprint. It can be anything. For instance, text label. Yeah, I selected stage 10 label, create from selection, create array. I keep the setup as is to save some time. And you can see it's a, it's nonsense now, but uh, yeah, you can imagine the use, the, the usage and the situation where your time will be saved. So this is Kiket, flexible, easy, simple, and fast. Stage 11, let's see stage 11. What's the stage 11 about? Stage 11, import DXF graphics in one to two scale as PCB shape. Ungroup the imported graphics. Okay, let's see. Uh, I prepared uh, the XF graphics in uh, the free cat, and the situation is uh, quite quite common. You work with uh, your fellow mechanical engineer, and your colleague designed the shape of the PCB, and you need to import the shape from his cat. Uh, to start with in, in Kicket. So for that, you need to go to the file menu, import graphics. Uh, you need to select the file, the exported DXF. So here is, here is the file PCB shape DXF. Open. I need uh, one to two scale, so it means 0 0.5. And I need it as a PCB shape. So I need to change the layer from user drawings to edge cuts. Here is the important, uh, important checkbox uh, I am going to talk about a little, ungroup versus group. Standard way is to import the, the the shape of the PCB as a grouped as, as a group when all the lines, arcs, everything is grouped together. Uh, so yeah, let's see. I will keep the group imported items checked, and I will I will I will show you what uh, what does it how, how it works. So here is the imported shape. And now you can see that the, the shape is, is the entire group. Uh, you cannot change the, the position of the lines because they are grouped. So uh, the solution is contextual menu with the, select, uh, with the selected shape, grouping menu, and group items. And now that is, the group is, is over, it's not valid anymore, and uh, the 
the section the, the parts of the shape is editable accessible and you can change anything you you need so it's a, a big time saver because uh, cats like free cat or basically any other and any cat that can export the XM graphics which is basically every cat can export your uh, PCB shape and now you can import it the the shape is perfect and it saves a lot of time because cat because KiCat is not so great for uh, drawing the the yeah for drawings it's uh, great for PC layouts but not for drawings so let's see the stage 12 stage 12 is about move absolute in the PCB editor and move relative in the PCB editor. Uh, frankly, I think that this tool is the one of the greatest commands in, in KiCad PCB editor. Let's see that we need to place those footprints uh, five millimeters from, from those uh, reference ones, three and a half millimeter from the second group and the five millimeters from them. So let's select the, the first footprint. And uh, now we can use the uh, move relative, which is shift P, or I can, I can, uh, uh, I can select from the menu, uh, positioning tools, position relative two. Now we need five millimeters in a, Horizontal position, yeah. do it again. Horizontal position, five millimeters. Five millimeters with a plus sign or without like in positive way means uh, to the right and minus five is to the left. So uh, five millimeters to the right from the reference item. I can select the, the item. Uh, this is not the footprint. I selected only the text uh, text label. So again, here is the footprint. And now I'm ready. Five millimeters from the reference footprint. Oop, it is here. The same with the second footprint. I need to select the new reference footprint. Here it is. And place. This is the quickest and most precise way how to position the footprints ever like uh, it's a it's a the ultra tool so i highly recommend to use the move relative the move positive uh, the move uh, the move absolute works uh, differently and uh, it uh, move the selected item or selected items uh, directly without reference item so we need to, to to choose the move exactly or move absolutely, move exactly. And now I selected the uh, this footprint and I need to move it uh, three millimeter to the right and uh, one millimeter upwards because uh, the zero the zero coordinate is the top left corner. So three millimeters to the right and one one millimeter to the to, to up upwards, okay, and it happened. Here you can see. It works like a charm, I love it. My tip, my tip for reference points. Uh, let's see, we have uh, the PCB corner and we need to position everything from the corner of the PCB. So I recommend to place a via there. Why via? Because via is a simple and small target for the move exactly or move uh, relatively tool. Uh, let's see. Move relative, select item, and you don't need to to precisely uh, check the, the corner. You just click the via and the via is now selected 
and uh, yeah, sometimes uh, it happened that you you select the wire, the the the, the line, the edge cut wire, the edge cuts uh, line, but you need to select the the via. It is like that. Uh, you, I am pretty sure you know the the usage of the tool. So another stage. Stage uh, thirteen. Find component movement using arrow keys and arrows. This is another another feature I love. Let's see. Let's say that we need to move uh, those two footprints vertically. So I am hitting the M key for the movement, and immediately after that, I don't touch the the mouse. I just press the arrow either up or down, yeah. I change the grid now. And now I can move the, I can, I can move the, move the mouse cursor, but the, the, the footprints are locked in the, or in the vertical position. If I cancel a command and do it again, I select the footprints, M for movement, and now I'm pressing the right arrow, yeah, just once. And now I'm going to move with the mouse. And now the footprints are locked in the horizontal way only. I cannot move the, yeah, you can see that the cursor is moving up and down, but the footprints are locked in the horizontal position. This is the extremely useful tool for crowded designs where you need to precisely position the, the, the footprints without uh, without movements to the axis you you don't you don't use you don't want to use so that that's the fine movement tool let's see another stage uh, stage 14 polygon priority in the pcb editor okay the situation is simple you need uh, uh, battery rectangle. It's a it's a similar situation, but let's say that you need uh, the polygon bed connected with the network bed inside of the ground polygon, but uh, you need them to be isolated, not in to be to to, to be not. Um, I don't know how to say like to be visible and to be. Uh, to be separated. And now I need to I need to uh, render the, the polygons, edit, uh, fill all zones. I need to I don't know why the polygons are not. Not visible now. Of that areas. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. This stage doesn't work now. I don't know how. I don't know why we get stop drawing and rendering the, the polygons. Oh, never mind. It happened. Stage 15, uh, create a micro via, a blind via, or buried via. The, the, the default option, the default window for the uh, micro vias is in the board setup window. And each net class contains the setup for micro vias. And here you can see the both net classes use the micro via of 0.3 with 0 0.1 uh, hole. And uh, once you need to place the microvia, you need to be in the routing command. So place, uh, press X for the, for the routing command. And in the contextual menu, there is a option for place blind or for it via or place microvia. Place microvia. Now here is the 
here is our microbial. Let's see its uh, properties. Uh, as you can see, here is for the reference the normal via. The microbial is uh, uh, smaller, naturally, but uh, the microbial has uh, the different colors, and uh, here is a setup for the for the microbial. You can choose from the menu where you need to start uh, the microbial and where is the end layer. So you can simply change the end layer here and the microbial uh, change to, to the inner two layer as I chose. You can see that in, in the top of the microbial shape, there is a top layer color and in the bottom there is a, the inner two layer color. Uh, the thing is that when, once you need to place the the Burit via, I don't know why, but Kikat uh, is placing the Burit via as the normal via size, which is, I think, not really useful because for HDI designs, you need uh, the micro vias uh, as, as blind or Burit because otherwise you just use the normal THD via. So my recommendation is to place the microvia with the uh, needed uh, dimensions, and then in the property windows, change the start or end layer. Or you can use the command, change active layer pair for routing, which is a small window here. And you can, you can say that my uh, active pair will be from front uh, layer to the inner two layer. And now all your microvias will be placed from front to the inner two. Okay, this is basically everything about the microvias. And uh, yeah, I think we are we are finished with the with the live demo. So let's see the Q and A section. Uh, John Willistein asked, is this only a live link for within the schematics editor or also, also for an exported? It's uh, it's functioning in the in the exported PDF as well. So it stays, it stays, uh, it stays working. It, it, it works even in the PDF. Uh, Chet Siever asked, what is the difference between lengthening of differential pairs in seven and eight? Yeah, the, the 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 length tooling in version seven uh, was was that you set the target length for all the all the tuning process. For instance, you set fifty millimeters as a target length, and then when, once you tune the length of the differential pairs of all the pairs of you are you were touching, the the length was the target length was was the set. Uh, 50 millimeters. Now in the version eight, uh, I didn't find that uh, that section for setting the final length, and uh, you just tune the length, and you need to check the the online length measuring tool if you are in the target or not. So I don't find it very useful, and I think it will it will change in in some some uh, in in a good further releases. Sean Borman asked, how do you set a target length for a single? Yeah, this is exactly exactly as I as I just explained. Uh, it uh, it seems to be gone exactly from the version eight, and I I don't know why because that was uh, a really useful part of the process because now you need to online check the the length measuring tool, but I don't think so. It's a uh, it's a good step from the developers, and I, I believe it will be it will be uh, put back in the further releases. Sean Borman continued, I'm using eight, and found the length tuning to be pretty intuit and intuitive broken. Uh, yeah, I am plus one to that opinion. Uh, Robert Marin, I noticed you are 
on Mac OS. Anything special to run on Mac? Uh, no, it uh, it uh, runs smoothly. Uh, yeah, I just started uh, 10 years ago or so. And uh, I wanted a system that runs without any any updates uh, that uh, cancel your work for uh, half an hour. And uh, yeah, you know, that, that situation. The Linux was the possibility, but after I quit, after about five years of using it, I decided that I need uh, the system to be uh, ready to work, not to be to be uh, tuned all the time. Uh, no offense to the Linux users. Sean Borman continued. Do you know a way to lock movement in only vertical or horizontal directions? Uh, yes, I think I... Uh, aha, you need like like permanently lock only in vertical. If you mean permanently, it doesn't, there is no way how to do it. Only when moving uh, items as I as I uh, presented in the in the live demo. Jakub Vinalek, the polygons are rendered because you already have a closed edge cuts somewhere else on the project. Aha, uh aha. -huh, uh -huh. Yeah, you are probably right. I in the in the demo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, you're right. Thank you. Thank you for the thank you for the explanation. Uh, another question. Which plugins are your favorite or must haves? Uh, let's see. My my must haves plugins are the interactive bomb. I use the bomb to push the designs to the manufacturing companies. I use the GLC plugin, GLC PCB plugin tools for my customers who wants to manufacture boards at the GLC PCB, including the PCB assembly. And the fourth one is Great Labels. It's called eBuzzArt. It makes, it creates uh, nice looking labels for silk screen. And uh, there are some, there are some small bugs, but uh, the 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 result from the key bazaar is is great, and the labels looks looks perfectly. So, uh, key bazaar, interactive bone, basically these two. I am not a fan of uh, of plugins. I need and I, I want my my tools to be in a one last stage. Because uh, after the upgrade, I don't need to to reinstall everything. But uh, those tools, those two tools are a must. Do you have any pro tips on grids? Uh, yeah, there are. There are the the grid settings changed in version eight, especially in the in the schematics. Uh, now, when you change the grid uh, with the uh, the hot key, uh, uh, let me show. Let me let me let me show. There is a section grids in schematic editor setup, and uh, you can set the fast grid switching grid one and grid two, and once you uh, you switch using the the fast grid switching. You can see the the actual grids, and you can place your own grid in the in the in the list here. So I edit I place the user grid of ten mils of uh, uh, aha there is already so I, I was I was just testing it a few days ago, and uh, I noticed that it works it works pretty 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 good. So uh, the fast Grid switching is uh, the pro tool I, I have, the only one. David Woods, do you have a method for persistent highlighting, painting, nets, including press? Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I know what you mean, but I don't, I don't have. It's, a, it's pretty, pretty uh, unstraightforward way. How to how to paint and how to change the the thickness and and color of nets. So I'm sorry I don't have. Orpheus Mora, 
All right, this. Uh, have you tried the spice? No, no, I didn't. <laughs> Frankly, I don't know why the developers spend so much time for uh, creating the simulation tool inside the KiCad when we have uh, the LT spice and uh, the Q spice and other tools that are free. I think they should be focusing on the on the schematics and PCB editor functions instead of the spice simulators. I'm sorry, no offense. Uh, does Kicket have online DRC? No, no. It's uh, only after you choose the command, the DRC check or ERC check. Do you create your libraries? Uh, yes, I use the project specific libraries for my customers because uh, along with the project files, I deliver the library files for all symbols and footprints used in the project. Okay, okay, that's it. Okay, I think that's it for today. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you so much, Peter, for presenting this amazing demo. This was so great. Thank you, thank you very much. I will send you the recording tomorrow and uh, see you next time. Thank you, bye-bye. Bye, everyone.